China's war ambitions. Race and ethnicity targeting bioweapons. Hear me out. I am the first person to dispel myths, overreporting, or just sensationalism in general. I just don't like it. Lots of people get China wrong, both positively and negatively. And I have to say, I've avoided covering this discovery because of just how crazy it actually sounds. But here's the deal. I lived in China for 10 years and I'm very, very careful about what I cover because I need to fully understand a topic before speaking on it. But recently I've stumbled across something and when I read about it and fact checked it and came to fully understand it, it turned out to be one of the most disturbing and sinister ambitions I've ever seen from the Chinese government. And now that I do understand it, I think that there's an incredibly important lesson to learn from it. We need to talk about something. And that something's called precision medicine. Precision medicine looks at the genetics, you know, the DNA, the environment, the lifestyle of a person in order to select a better treatment that could work best for them. It's simple to understand the basics. All you need to know is that understanding the genome or the human DNA structure can target certain diseases like Alzheimer's or cancer. Amazing stuff, really. The USA launched a precision medicine initiative and it pumped an initial investment of $215 million into it. I want you to remember that figure for later. An amazing example of precision medicine is the University of Wisconsin scientists who made an exogenous naked DNA and injected it into the veins for easy access into muscle cells for gene therapy. Does that not sound amazing? We might be looking at a future with less and less disease, longer lifespans, more time with loved ones, with less pain and less suffering. Until you understand the Chinese government and the People's Liberation Army, the Army of China's ambitions truly are. In fact, let me quote a colonel of the China's People's Liberation Army, Guo Jiwei, Director of Medical Affairs, with the exact same quote I just told you. But this time, I'll finish the sentence. University of Wisconsin scientists have made an exogenous naked DNA and injected it into veins for easy access into muscle cells for gene therapy. By combining this knowledge and particle gun technology, we could create a micro bullet out of one micrometer of tungsten or gold ion on whose surface plasmid DNA or naked DNA could be precipitated and deliver the bullet via a gunpowder explosion, electron transmission, or high pressured gas to penetrate the body's surface. We could then release DNA molecules to integrate with the host cells through blood circulation and cause disease or injury by controlling genes. You ever wonder why the Chinese government was so eager to get genetic information from a large sample of global gene data from pregnancy tests and DNA tests and other things? If you didn't know, China has access to an incredible amount of people's DNA, maybe even yours. A Chinese company, BGI, sold international pregnancy tests. So far, more than 8 million women have taken BGI's prenatal tests globally. Not only that, but multiple Chinese companies have contracts to access US genetic data. I'm not kidding. Johns Hopkins, Mount Sinai, these institutions receive US genetic data. Some of these companies even have US holdings to process data. And why would China want to access all of this data? Well, the answers are a lot more nefarious than I had originally thought. You see, the Chinese military owns that company. You know that one that made the pregnancy test? And it might be connected to something that we once only thought was in science fiction nightmares. China comes up with something called a five-year plan for everything. It's a communist thing. They come up with these goals and targets that they must hit. And when they don't, they move the goalposts and said they did. A great example would be Xi Jinping, the leader of China's poverty alleviation campaign. It was declared in a five-year plan that China would completely eradicate poverty. Fast forward five years and of course there was still poverty in China, but they had to say that they finished it off. So now the standard of poverty has been changed to only 400 some dollars per year. 
That's pretty poor if you ask me. Anyway, the five-year plan in question today is the one put forward about precision medicine. If you look at the outline, it really looks fine and dandy until you get to the last and final feature. It says, National security focus includes special limitation on foreign access. Foreign organizations, individuals, and their institutions established or actually controlled shall not collect or preserve human genetic resources in China within the territory of our country and may not provide human genetic resources of our country abroad. So basically, China has an access to a plethora of foreign genome data and it restricts the outside world from its own. A bit suspect, but hey, that's just how China does everything, right? Then you look at the investment thrown at the technology. Do you remember when I told you to remember that $215 million figure from earlier? That's what the US invested in the technology for disease prevention and treatment. Do you know how much the Chinese government invests in? $9.2 billion. The US invested 2% of what China did. And it might not be for what the CCP wants you to think it's for. Enter civil military fusion or dual use biology. It was adopted in 2016 alongside that precision medicine thing I just told you about. So as not to make any mistakes, let me just quote the Chinese military and scientists directly. The weaponization of biological bodies will become a reality in the future. Biotechnology will make biological weaponization a reality. New non-traditional forms of confrontation, such as biological attack, biological destruction, and ecological control will become possible. Biotechnological weapons can cause destruction that is both more powerful and more civilized than that caused by conventional killing methods like gunpowder or nuclear weapons. The increased pace of development of modern biotechnology tells us that the day on which we will begin to make full military use of its advantages is not too far off. We believe that command of military biotechnology is a reasonable scientific presumption, not a scientific illusion. Emphasis was placed on the potential offensive applications of biotechnology, including ethnic genetic attacks. In other words, attacks that target specific races or ethnic groups of people. Through gene manipulation, we can attack or injure one or more key human physiological functions. The ability to learn, memorize, keep one's balance, or perform fine motor activities. When attacking an enemy with biotechnological military weapons, we can cause physiological dysfunction by producing an ultra-micro damaging effect to a gene or protein structure and functioning. Precision injury and ultra micro damage are two vulnerating methods based on genomics and proteomics. Unlike weapons that use ammunition whose damaging effects can only be ascertained after shooting, we can test in a laboratory to the degree of damage biotechnological weapons produce. We can control the degree of injuries and damage produced and even provide an antidote or a cure a vaccine, a counter-vulnerating agent, or a piece of bioinformation. Providing such an anodyne to our enemies would represent real mercy. You see, China has agreed to non-proliferation of bioweapons, and it has stated that it abandoned all bioweapons research that it previously pursued. It also consistently denied any interest or pursuit of biological weapons in formal statements, declarations, and disclosures by its state leaders and media. However, I want you to pay very close attention to this. It also states, China should not hesitate if it should have to defend itself to use as many means of warfare as possible, including weapons that are not permitted by international law and rules of war, such as chemical and biological weapons. Do you understand the absolute hypocrisy of these statements. This is something that the Chinese government does in business, trade agreements, and world institutions. They say one thing and they do another. And you, behind the language barrier, do not understand why they're doing so. Whether it's lab-borne or natural, the pandemic has been a fantastic proof of concept for the Chinese government to show how devastating a negative biological impact can be.
and has successfully tested how it can be used for domestic propaganda. In other words, look at the rest of the world in economic and social squalor bickering over vaccines, and turning the pandemic into a partisan issue. Think Republican versus Democrat. While we, China, have controlled the narrative and blocked enough information about the true devastation of the virus here at home, that the Chinese populace sees us, the CCP, as not only the victors, but also the saviors. There is a fantastic podcast I just listened to from my buddy Jordan Harbinger. It's a good friend of mine. He puts on an excellent show, but he just interviewed a guy named Rob Reed on episode 510. The episode's called Why the Future is a Good Kind of Scary. They talk about while the fact that COVID-19 has been devastating on a global scale, it's comparatively benign when we consider how bad it could have been with a deadlier, more transmissible virus and a decimated infrastructure without access to basic necessities. He talks about why gain-of-function research is so dangerous, and he talks about how the death toll inflicted by the society's mass murders is limited only by the weapons that they have available. It's absolutely fascinating stuff, and I highly, highly recommend you check it out. It's completely free. Link is down in the description and the pinned comment. Definitely, definitely give it a listen. And don't forget to subscribe. No matter where you get your podcast, make sure you subscribe to the show. Highly recommend it. But riddle me this. How are we not paying attention to the fact that high-ranking people in the Chinese military are publishing books and papers and possibly coinciding with biomilitary research that quite literally is a biological weapon that targets the human genome to specifically attack certain ethnicities and races? And they are using American and international data to do so, all while blocking the world from access to their own data. There is a serious imbalance in how China is treated. And no, I'm not calling for war. War is devastation. Bad information led to the Iraq War. Immoral torture techniques used by the US government on terrorists misled American leaders to think that there was a connection between Saddam Hussein and Osama bin Laden. And it led to literal devastation. And it was unnecessary at that. Colin Powell led us Americans to believe based on his intel that there was going to be biological weapons of mass destruction against Americans and we went to war. And countless people died. Billions of dollars were lost and over 200,000 people have died at the hands of both sides since the U.S. invaded Iraq. That disaster was from weak and bad information. And guess what? Here we are with actual documents from the Chinese military which outlines research about how to racially target people's genetics of certain ethnicities to torture, disable, and murder them. And somehow, that's okay. We have a country's government with more than 4 million people's blood on their hands because its face, reputation, and pride was more important than being transparent and stopping the spread of a deadly pandemic. Its lies did this to the world. And to rub salt in the wound, it blames the USA and other countries for the origin and threatens military conflict. We in the rest of the world usually say we should treat China with compassion and understanding. Meanwhile, China says kill all foreigners with bioweapons. However, we don't need to respond with hate. No, inclusion and understanding is one of the best attributes of American culture. It's not perfect, but I believe that America is a nice country with people, for the most part, who are very welcoming. I think China is the same. I spent 10 years there. It's one of my favorite places in the entire world. It's a beautiful country with friendly people, but the Chinese government is hell-bent on changing that. And in a culture of face like China, you know, reputation, the Chinese government needs to stop getting a free pass on everything. They need to lose face diplomatically. 
China should not be allowed to participate in global institutions when it constantly and consistently breaks the rules, points the blame, and gets a pass after making serious threats at the free world. Military incursions, bioweapons, censorship, government-sponsored xenophobia, genocide, and weaponized nationalism, all while laughing at the polarization that the pandemic has caused. The vaccine versus no vaccine protests, the partisan issues, the division. This diversion is a diversion away from what the Chinese government is actually doing right now. How do you not see it yet? And if nothing is done now, then when?